Tech Time Traveler here, and here we go with round two of Will It Run Hard Drive Edition. So in my last video, I brought out about 15 IDE hard drives of sizes ranging from 100 megabytes to 600 megabytes that I purchased for cheap on eBay. I wanted to see how many of them still worked after 30 years, and if possible, what was on them. The results were decidedly mixed, as were the uh, digital archaeology. Uh, near the end of the video, I'd begun to suspect that my so-called Commodore 46 rig had some issues. Commenters on that video offered a lot of helpful suggestions, including orienting the drives either flat or sideways, but not hung down diagonally as I had them. Other suggestions focused on whether I jumpered the drives correctly, or followed the correct procedures for getting them recognized by the BIOS. Unfortunately, for this second video, I wasn't able to implement most of those suggestions because it had already been filmed in sequence with the first. Originally, this video was going to be part of the first video, but I decided to split them up. At the end of filming, I had something like five hours of footage, and to condense that in an intelligent way down to 38 minutes uh, meant that quite a lot was left on the cutting room floor. So viewers didn't get to see me literally trying every possible jumper combination, for example, or countless reboots or attempts to get the BIOS to detect the drive properly. It's just what I chose to keep in the video. Anyways, as things stood at the end of the first video, I had just a handful of working drives with the majority being apparently unusable. That wasn't unexpected given their age, but I suspected that wasn't accurate because just for fun, I decided to connect one of the drives to my Pentium 3 Bench PC. Sure enough, when I hooked up a drive from the quote-unquote dead pile to the Pentium 3 machine, it worked like a hot damn. I decided I should try changing computers and retest the dead again. And that brings us to this video. So when we left off, we had just three of our 15 drives confirmed working and six dead. Not great numbers. That means I paid $27 approximately per working drive. So let's see if we can improve on that. Who knows, maybe some vintage is still out there waiting to be rescued. Okay, so first up, let's get the 46 out of here and swap in the Pendium 3. This is a generic tower that was sold from some years ago by a Vancouver-based company. I think they were called Touch Systems or something like that. Anyway, it belonged to a client of mine whom I was helping with a data transfer. I realized it would be perfect as a bridge between my older machines and my newer ones. The Pentium 3 is old enough to recognize and use most of the oldest IDE hard drives, but it has modern amenities like USB and networking and such. I actually keep two hard drives in this thing, an older 40 gig Maxter and this Quantum Bigfoot, which was formerly in my Commodore tower. That has just a DOS 5 install. The other is Windows XP. Anyway, for now we're going to be disconnecting both and just using the primary IDE cable to do our testing. So we'll get her all plugged in here. This machine has been pretty darn reliable. I'll trust its judgment on the worthiness of these old drives a little more than I did the 46s. I don't know why, but I love these old slot one machines. They just have that kind of, I don't know, modular Lego kind of feel to them when putting one of these together. They were a lot easier to install without damaging anything versus the Athlon XP processors that I often used. This machine looks like it's seen better days, but I do have all of the additional parts including the side and the front for the case. I just don't really bother assembling it fully as I'm always using it for various projects and constantly swapping hardware in and out of it. Alright, so first up for retest, let's check out this Western Digital 2120 again. I didn't have any luck with WD on the first round, but let's see what it does this time with our P3. Aha! Recognized! And booting! Woohoo! Okay, suspicion validated. Looks like this was a network workstation, and I see a driver being loaded for an Etherlink 3, which is a network interface card or NIC that I used to know pretty well. I don't have that in my P3 though. And looks like we have Smart Drive. If I remember correctly, Smart Drive was used to improve disk caching speeds under MS-DOS, basically swapping frequently used data up into RAM. It feels familiar, but I honestly don't remember if I ever ran it myself. I ran a low-budget competitor. Uh, I'm going to organize your files for you, George. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And real fast, there's what looks like a Novel Network Client config, and then the Etherlink 3 driver again, and then we freeze up. Man, it seems like it's been eons since Novell was a thing. I remember in 1989 or so, our computer lab at our school was overhauled with a bunch of Epson 8088 machines. They look like this, and uh, yeah, they seem to be kind of a rare beast these days. They were kind of distinct in my memory because they had the five and a quarter inch bays centered in the front of the case and a biggish power button. I believe the model was MBC 16 or 16 plus or something like that. 
I've only once seen one for sale. It may have been more of a Canadian or foreign thing. Alright, let's reboot and see if we can get that batch file to stop before it gets stuck. Hmm. Yeah, and every now and again the P3 system doesn't pick it up. That clunking noise is bothersome. Reboot again. Alright, stop the batch file and let's see what's going on here. It looks pretty basic. I see old networking stuff galore, like Lantastic. And here's good old Windows 3.1. Uh, listen to the melodic sounds of the WD drive working away. of stuff on here, which is kind of what you'd expect for a network client. Oh well, at least we now know the drive is alive. Let's do another WD, shall we? Here's the 1210 that our 486 refused to play nice with. And uh, yeah, it seems to spin up alright. And a swing and a miss. No boot. I'll try again. I've noticed some of these drives take a while to fully spin up and be ready. I don't know if that's how they were or a defect, but... Uh, Okay, recognized. So, yeah, that's good. But hanging. Nope, wait, it's working. Windows 95 with Microsoft Plus. Yay, I, I think. Uh, taking its sweet time to load here. All right, a login prompt. Mmm, Windows 95 security. Hey man, can you let me in, bro? What's the password? No idea, bro. Carry on. Thanks, bro. And we have a generic desktop. Haha, <laughs> the internet. Yeah, for whatever reason, this seems to be pretty darn vanilla. Not much archaeology here. But a drive that appears to be more or less working, so we'll change the status on that one. And next on F*** Around and Find Out, here's an IBM DSAA 3270, 270 megs. Will it work this time? Well, it might as a jet engine. And it's recognized. And we've got DOS. And Smart Drive. And... Zero. Hmm. Probably not the drive. Let's reboot and see what happens. And just like we did on the previous drive, we'll just uh, break it here. If only Control C worked in real life. But, but, but. Uh, I just terminated your batch job, Chuck. How do you like them apples? Lots of files here, and uh, yeah, I'm seeing actual names. Lauren, Jeff, Sandra, and Roast. Also, I see Quicken. Yeah, so this is probably from a personal computer, would be my guess. I just tried a quick type out of Roast, but uh, yeah, I guess it's some kind of custom file. Yeah, maybe WordPerfect? I can't remember, but I think WordPerfect didn't use file extensions at the time. And I'm just doing another directory here. I think this may have been an IBM drive and an IBM machine of some sort. I see a factory directory, which is probably for a factory restore. And we have Windows 3.1 and Word, Excel, yeah, pretty standard stuff that you'd find on a home user PC back in the day. All right, let's crank up Windows here. Man, I've forgotten that it used to actually have to manually start Windows. <laughs> and nothingness. Yep, throws right up. No, well, that's pretty authentic Windows for that period. And yeah, that sucks. I think Windows 3.1 would have required high mem and uh, yeah, I didn't see it come up at boot and I'm guessing maybe it's after the freeze up point here. Let's just stop the whole deal and have a look at where it might be hanging up. Just to going to see if we have edit. Nope. We do have a crap ton of temp files though, which usually indicate some kind of a problem. What's that about? I think I'll try ditching not so smart drive here and see what happens. Thank you. 
Well, at least I get to a prompt now, but again, running Windows freezes up. Oh well, I suspect there's some kind of problem here. Uh, something my P3 isn't liking. The drive is perfectly fine otherwise, though. Alright, next up is this Western Digital 2340. And it seems to spin up, but not seen. Okay, I'll reboot. Now it sees the drive, but yeah, not booting. I heard a nasty clunk earlier. Maybe this drive is toast. All right, now to a Seagate ST3144A, 130 megs. And it seems to spin up and it's recognized, so that's good. But will it boot? Nope, non-system disk. All right, let's try a boot floppy here. And yes, it sounds like a fan on my P3 CPU is kicking the bucket. Uh, yeah, I guess after 20-something years, it really doesn't owe me anything. All right, so it does look like there's stuff on this drive. Again, looking like a pretty clean network client setup here. You can see Lantastic, Windows 3 point something. Hmm, what's this? This is Mike. Can you hear me? We hear you, Mike. We hear you. Not seeing anything really exciting at first blush, though. It's probably not booting because my P3 doesn't like how the partition is set up or something. Yeah, I don't think there's anything seriously exciting here, but what I will do is nuke and pave. I just want to see if the drive is usable or not. Even to this day, I feel a little nervous when I'm using FDisk. I did so many bad things with FDisk back when I was a kid with my dad's computer. All right, new partition, new lease on life. Let's try formatting. What the? Is this thing sending Morse code? Yeah, I think this one, uh, she's dead, yo. I'm gonna put this on the maybe pile for now. You know, hope springs eternal. All right, here's that IBM DSAA3540, I think. The one with the loose PCB. Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna try it anyway. Let's see if it's really dead as I suspect. I mean, it's probably dead. Don't usually just loosen PCBs for no reason, but we'll see. Whoa, okay, it's recognized. 541 megabytes, perfect. Still have my boot floppy in, so we'll just quickly see if anything's there. Wow, that's a lot of check files. Yeah, this drive has probably had some issues somewhere. All right, reboot disk and reboot. Yay, Windows 95 again. Yeah, this thing actually seems to be starting right up. Fantastic. See, never judge a book just by its loose PCB. Although, I do wonder why it was loose though. Damn it, I'm just short three screws and I can finish that rocket launcher. Okay, so here we are at a color degraded Windows desktop. Let's see what's on C here. Super Tet? What's that? Ah, Super Tetris. But I can't run it because I don't have the correct video driver for this machine. What else have we got here? Disney's Magic Artist. Dim memories here, but I do kind of recall something sort of like that. And it wants a CD. And I don't have that. All right, let's look around here and see if there's any lingering data files. Not really. It's been so long, honestly, I've forgotten where things are with Windows 95. All right, not really much else going on here as far as I can tell. Anyway, I'm gonna move this to the working pile. And the average cost per working drive takes another dip. Okay, here we have another Seagate ST3144A. Let's see what happens. And that's the sound of failure, folks. The drive just decided it couldn't care less and shut down. And the computer also couldn't care less and carried on. I'm gonna chalk that one up as a fail. And now we're gonna move on to this Seagate ST3630A. This is the big 630 gig, I mean, meg hard drive. Will it come to life?
Well, it's woodpeckering away here. But not recognized. Okay, we'll reboot and try again. Man, it sure sounds like it's trying. But, kind of like the adult child living in your basement, it'd prefer not to have to work. Well, let's try changing the jumpers here. I think it's presently set to slave, and that might have been from my previous tangle with it. I'll try moving the jumpers and see if that gets us anywhere. The fact that it's spinning down, though, is not a hopeful sign. These were not designed for people with real hands, by the way. And here we go. Jumper change for the win. I regret for the purposes of narration, I didn't know what jumper selection worked, but I probably would have gone back to single or master here. And another smart drive user. Man, that was popular back then, huh? Okay, so it looks like we have a pretty standard DOS installation. Probably DOS 5 going by the volume label. I'll try starting Windows here. And we have a substantially modified Windows 3.1 interface, and it appears to belong to a Jim Stewart. Jim, if you're out there, Alright, let's see what Jim was doing whenever this was shut down. Hmm, educational software is always a plus. Looks like a US geography type thing. When I was in high school, even though we were up in Canada, I did have to learn all 50 states and capitals. And uh, yeah, I wonder how my aged cranium fares today. All right, lay it on me. And apparently I don't know where Iowa is. That's okay though, I don't think most Americans do either. Capital of Kentucky. Well, it's been uh, about 30 years since I've been to Kentucky. Yeah, no, it's Frankfurt, of course. Capital of Illinois. Well, that's pretty easy, Springfield. Yeah, locate Montana. No problem, I think it's right up over here. Capital of Maine, Portland, nope, Augusta, close enough. Uh, all right, well, that's enough embarrassment for tonight. Uh, what's next? What's this tutorial business? Oh, wow, a Windows 3.1 tutorial. How to move stuff onto the desktop. If only they had an instructional on how to make Windows 3.1 suck less. What else have we got here? What's new? Not much there, but it reveals some other documents tucked away. What's this? What the... <laughs> A questionnaire on legalizing marijuana by Scott McCormick and David Shirley. Kind of funny how relevant that topic is today. I'm not into weed personally. Uh, you know, my experience with stuff like that eh, doesn't always go so well.
But hey, I can get behind freedom, right? Yeah, so it looks like this questionnaire was conducted in 1998, which to me seems so recent, but uh, yeah, that's actually approaching 30 years ago. Yipes. And now it's this, Central Point. Wow, I haven't thought of their antivirus product in eons. Yeah, games looks like standard stuff. Applications, yeah, just the usual Windows stuff. Uh, what's in drive C here? Dare 3? What's that? Now let's check out the DOS side a bit. What is LV Casino? It doesn't seem to be an actual program here. Alright, let's check out another directory, Jill3. Now, what is that all about? Jill Saves the Prince? Never heard of it. Looks fun though. Oh uh, yes, the classic 256 color VGA game with the horrible PC speaker sound. <laughs> yeah, these were produced as I was kind of starting to get out of PC gaming, uh, at least for this kind of thing. I was getting more into like real-time strategy stuff like Total Annihilation by this point, and uh, yeah, actually I was kind of gaming less and less by now. And we're figuring out keys here. Apparently Jill doesn't... Oh wait, she jumps. Wow, she jumps high. Uh, but not high enough, it looks like. <laughs> Apples gives you health. Go figure. Also give you gas. Uh, there's another way around here. What is that? A boomerang? Alright, let's not dwell on this too long. What else have we got? Dare? Requires windows. Okay, well, that's not gonna work right now. Uh, Kilo, what's this? Yeah, it looks like it was made by the same people who made Jill. The Adventure of a Lifetime. <laughs> uh, man, I love those old school VGA graphics though. 256 colors at, uh, I don't know, I guess this is 640 by 480, I think. Yeah, I was many steps above EGA's 16 blocky colors, but uh, still had kind of a computery feel to them, if you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, this appears to be a shoot 'em up of sorts. And do I want to leave this excitement? Yes, unfortunately I do. And here we have Kilo 3. Nope, instead we have my four favorite words. Error has occurred. F and circle. Well, that sounds like not what I was thinking. Uh, <laughs> wow. I'm not sure what's going on on the right here, but uh, yeah, I won't hang on to this too long. And then we have BG1. Black gold? Never heard of it. And it bombed. All right. 
Oh, let's look around some more here. Uh, a lot of untitled windows. Someone had some windows 3.1 difficulties, it appears. Uh, yeah, nothing really here. Mmm, good old Windows 3.1 Task Manager. So weak. Alright, I'm not sure why I chose to do this, but apparently I dropped into DOS and then found this directory, uh, which turns out to be some game called Alien Carnage. At least I hope it's a game. Well, that didn't do too much. Here's a directory. PSD. Purple Saturn Day. Man, things just keep getting weirder around here. And I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, let's just abort this. Alright, well, at least we've proven this old dog still works. Good job, Seagate. Now we have a Connor CP30254H, 240 megs. And uh, yeah, let's see if a new chance at life brings this baby back. And she spins up. We have post. And we have hangage. Dang. All right, I'll try a reboot again just to see if it needs more time to get settled. Negative. All right, well, time to play jumper musical chairs here. I think my camera glitched here, but basically I tried all three jumper settings and got zero. Sorry, Connor, I tried. Okay, so now we move to a Seagate ST3491A, 429.1 megabytes. You know, I think someone was being just a little too class action lawsuit averse here. All right, so we'll power up and recognized. Okay, that's great, but invalid system disk. Okay, that could be something with the computer not liking the partition. I'll try a boot disk again. Yeah, I'm not sure why I skipped the archaeology here and went straight to F-disking this thing, but uh, yeah, anyway. Sorry guys, I totally failed in looking for... Alright, let's see how a format does. Well, format seems to be alright, and the system transferred, so will it boot now? Yep, boots right up. Alright, a 429.1 meg drive that just seems to work just fine. Another win. I'm not sure I can handle this much winning. And that's all she wrote, folks. I have no more drives to test here, but basically our results are excellent. As it stands, we have 11 of 15 drives that seem to be basically working. That's insane. A 12th drive sort of works, but sort of doesn't, and requires a little bit more testing to be sure. Of the 15, just three were confirmed not working. I'm not sure if maybe I can try a low-level format or something with those. That was a trick I used to use on older, smaller capacity drives back in the day. Not sure if it works with these sizes, though. With 11 working drives, if we divide the $80 I spent on the total lot, that brings us to approximately $7.27 per working drive. That's well below my targeted cost. Seven bucks for a working vintage hard drive? Shut up and take my money. But uh, yeah, that's it for this adventure though. I will revisit some of the other drives I have kicking around in my shop, but they require some actual investigation and may end up being individual videos of their own. Anyway, on to the next video project. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you're enjoying the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you're really crazy about it, well, feel free to sign up for Patreon. That'll help speed up channel improvements and maintain this gear. And of course, if you don't like it, well, you know what to do and I'll see it in... Yep, that's it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks so much to my patrons for helping make this possible.